Hello and welcome to the Service Management Series sponsored by Western Computer. My name is Bill Harris. I'm a functional consultant here at Western Computer. And this is the first in a series of about five webinars to cover some of the service management setups that you can do in your NAV installation. Like most other NAV modules, we have a global setup table for service, and that's what our topic is today. So here we are on the service management setup page. We're going to cover the general tab and then the following tabs. So you can see the first thing that you'll see are warnings and email addresses. These are designed to set off automatic emails internally to your company as a service order approaches its response time. You can define the email addresses here or on your responsibility center that is set up for your service department. Next big field here is the next service calculated method. And you can choose planned or actual. So when you're using service contracts to create service orders, it will determine what the next service order date is, the next service, based upon either when you plan to do it or when you actually did it. Here you can define the service order starting fee. This is a look up to the resource table. You can define whether you want to ship an invoice always together or separately. Over here on this field where we define whether we want to have one service item per line per order, you can choose to have multiple ones if that's your model where you would be fixing multiple pieces of equipment on one service order or whether you just want to have a one-to-one -one relationship. The link service to service items checkbox allows you to link any of the entries that are created from the service order to the service item. We would recommend that you do that. The next two fields have to do with resources and service zones. And when you use this resource availability module, you can define whether you want to show the codes, uh, display a warning, or you can choose not to use them at all. There's a fault reporting matrix that you can define. It goes, as we can see here, fault and symptom and area. That is optional, but you can define what level you want to go to here. And you can globally define what your base calendar is for your service department, whether you work weekends, after hours, two shifts, and so forth. Next two checkbox have to do with whether comments get copied from the order to the posted documents, whether that be the invoice or the shipment. And then, of course, where you want a logo to go on your document. The next tab is for mandatory fields. There are eight, as you can see here, and you would tick these off, and then these fields would be required or mandatory on the service order or contract. And if you fail to fill them in, you would get a warning telling you that those fields can't be empty. Under the defaults tab, we've got a default response time that is globally set here to 24 hours in this case. If the service item is not assigned to a service item group where you can further define it based upon those groups, it'll default to this global setting. Likewise, we've got warranty discounts for parts, warranty discounts for labor, and warranty duration. So you can see here we've got 100% discount for parts, 50% for labor, and we default to a one-year warranty period on your service items. Under contracts, this next section here has to do with the use of service contracts. The first field has to do with what window, how many days do you want to look forward when you are creating service orders? So if you've got these set up where maybe you've got semi-annual services, you want to see those well in advance, you might set this to a longer time period as we have here. But if your service department is going out every 60 or 90 days, that period may be too long for you, but you can define what period you want to look at when you run that batch job. Under the next tick boxes here, you can choose whether you want to use cancel reasons on contracts whether you want to register the contract changes to a change log. And then there's four fields for text codes. And these are for the invoice, the line, the period, and credit memos. The invoices that are created from contracts are relatively generic. They'll give you a service item number and a period of time and an amount. So you can use these text fields. It looks up to the standard text field table to say things like this is your maintenance invoice for the month, that kind of thing. So you can come up with some base text codes to use there. And the last two fields have to do with evaluating the contract. If you choose to use this, and you can use none if you don't want to do that, but some companies will use a base of a unit price or a base of a unit cost to determine the value of a contract. Think of something you buy that's worth $10,000. The service contract is 10% of that. And here you can define if you want to use that and what that value percentage would be is filled in here, in this case, 15%. And then finally, we've got the number series that are set up for all of the documents used within service management, things from service items, quotes, orders, and invoices, 
to credit memos, to shipments, and over here, of course, to service contracts, invoices, and credit memos. So that concludes our coverage of the service management setup page. I look forward to seeing you soon on a, another webinar.